Hey everyone, welcome to episode 3 of LabVIEW Tips and Tricks. Today I wanted to show you a simple architecture that you can use for your application. It's called Event Driven State Machine and something I was using for a lot of my simpler projects. You can actually use this even for your more advanced projects, but this concept is quite simple and it's easy to implement in LabVIEW. The thing that we want to achieve with this simple loop architecture is basically we want to have a state machine, but a state machine that is going to react to user inputs with an event structure. So first of all, the higher priority is the user input, and we will use the user input to overwrite the functionality of the state machine. So the things that are going on in the state machine are a lower priority than the events generated by the user. So to create this, we will start with a simple while loop. We will add the while loop into our application. And then inside of the while loop, we will add an event structure. So I added the event structure here. We will work with the timeout event for the event structure. So we need to wire some kind of value here for the timeout. So let's wire a uh, 25 milliseconds, for example. And here in the timeout case, so basically whenever a user doesn't provide any input or there are no events happening, then we will go to the timeout. And in the timeout, we will basically handle the state of the the current state of the state machine. So inside of the timeout case, we will create a state machine. So we, we will take a case structure, put it inside, and basically now we just need to create some states for the state machine. So let's create a state enumerated data type. So let's go right click and programming, numeric, and enum constant. So I'm putting the enum constant here. I'm going to right click and make a type definition out of this one because I'm going to use it in multiple places in my application. So I'm going to open this type, uh, type def. Now I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to save it as state. This is going to be my name for the control. I'm going to edit the icon like so state and OK. And now I'm going to add some states. So basically, let's add three states. Edit items. And I'm going to add initialize, so init. I'm going to add play. And I'm going to add stop. So let's say this is a simple application. I'm not going to actually put anything in those states. Those are just going to be states that are basically waiting, let's say, for 500 milliseconds until they continue. OK, so let's close this. Yes. So now we have our type definition here. So this is our state type definition. Let's just call it state as well here. And since, with every, since we are working with a type definition, we basically need a shift register to hold our state for next iteration. So I'm going to create a shift register here, wire the init state to the initializer, and sorry, to the shift register. So the first state that our state machine goes to will be initialization. And OK, and maybe I'm going to add one more state that's going to be the idle state. So let me edit items. Let me insert idle. So not doing anything in the idle state. OK, save, save this. And now we just need to wire this shift register, this enum, to the input of our case structure. And now we have a simple state machine. Let's just right click on the border of the case structure and add case for every value. And basically, after we initialize, we want to go to idle state. So I'm going to go to idle state from here. 
and then let's say that from play I want to be playing continuously so whenever I go to play I will be playing continuously and let's say that when I go uh, when I go to stop I just want to continuously stop so this is this actually should execute only once this stop but uh, but let's just for the just for being safe let's put in here a stop that's not actually important and from idle i want to go to idle so basically this application will, will initialize once in the beginning then it's going to go to idle state and now we just need a way how to make this application actually move from one state to the other and since this is an event driven state machine so here we have an event structure that means we can actually create a user interface for our uh, users and ask them to provide a new state that the state machine should go to I'm just gonna create an indicator here so we know in which state we are right now in current iteration okay and I'm gonna add in every state I'm gonna add just a function to wait let's say 250 milliseconds okay copy this copy here copy here and copy here maybe in the idle state I'm gonna lower this down to 25 so it's gonna wait for 25 milliseconds every time it goes to this timeout case okay so now we just need a way to move from one state to the other so let's define that we want to have three buttons I want to have a, a button I'm gonna go to silver palette I'm gonna go to boolean and buttons I'm gonna take the play button I'm gonna take the media stop button and I'm gonna take the application stop button I'm going to change this name to from stop button to stop app. I'm going to change this from media stop to uh, pause. And I'm going to change this from maybe pause state machine. And I'm going to change this to play state machine. Okay. And now we can use those buttons to define the events that are going to be controlling how our case structure, so our state machine behaves. So let, let's right click on the event structure and add an, add an event case. So here I'm going to add a case for play. And a case for play, I'm just going to put the button inside. And the case for play is just going to be go to play. And then let me another uh, let me add another one. So add event case pause state machine. I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna put the button inside, and this is this should be idle. So I want the state machine to go back to idle. Okay. And now let's add just the stop stop application. And in the stop application, I don't actually want to write directly to this uh, loop termination condition. I actually want to go to the stop state and I want the stop state to handle all of the um, deinitialization which is required for my application to safely shut down. So the only thing that I need to do in the timeout where I handle all the cases of my event driven state machine, I just need to go to stop and I want to provide a boolean constant here so programming boolean and true constant and I want to wire this true constant to the termination of the loop and I can use use default if unwired here that's totally okay and if I, if I run this application it should go first of all it should initialize once which, which is what I want. And then after it initializes, I should be able to push play. Then it should change state to play. And then I should be able to stop it or pause it and send it to idle. And then when I press stop app, it should stop. So let's run this. 
So it initialized and it went to idle. Now I can press play and it's going to be continuously playing until I stop. And I can play again and stop again. And I can install the whole application like this. Okay, now let's say that we want to see something on the screen. So we want to have a generation of a signal, but only when play button is pressed, has been pressed and we are in the play state. So let's go here into the play state. I'm going to add signal processing, waveform generation and basic function generation. Let's also maybe randomize the, fre uh, the frequency of the signal a little bit. So let's go to numeric. Let's go to random number. Let's multiply this random number. Let's say by 100. That means we will get a, a random frequency from the range of 0 to 100. And let's wire this to the frequency input. So now we have a random function generator. And we want to show this function on the screen. So I'm going to go to silver palette, graph, waveform graph. OK. And now I'm just going to put this waveform graph here to the play state. And I'm going to show this waveform on the screen. So the idle state and the idle state, nothing is going to be generated. Then when I push play, I'm going to start generating some frequencies and they're going to be generated until I press stop state machine or pause state machine, like so. And now I go back to idle state and this is stop state. OK, so once more, while loop inside of a while loop, we create a event structure. Inside, the, inside of the timeout case of the event structure, we handle the states of a state machine. And thanks to this, we can have a state machine, which is normally, normally going from state to state, unless the user decides that he wants to change how the state machine operates. So we allow the user for uh, changing the state as fast as possible, but we still allow the state machine to execute the next step, the next step after 25 milliseconds. So this has been event-driven state machine. Please let me know in the comments below if you would like to see something more about this topic. Also remember to like and subscribe if you want to see new episodes in the future. Thanks.